And talk to our good friend Sam McEwen of the Omaha World Herald, who has had a lot to uh, write about over the uh, last uh, uh, couple of days, I would say. Good morning, Sam. Hey, what's going on? Uh, what's going on with you? You watched that in person. Um, you had good interaction. I, You were very busy writing lots of words yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, for sure. For sure. It, it was, uh, you know, it's one of those, as my colleague Evan and I talked before the game, you know, I think we both felt a sense of, this could be really interesting. Like this is a real, this is a real opportunity to see um, where Nebraska's at. And, you know, to, this is a test for Indiana. And it's a test for Nebraska and hostile atmosphere, but not overly intimidating atmosphere. And, you know, um, sense of anticipation at kickoff of like, well, what could this possibly be? And then to watch the game unfold the way it did and for it to be so lopsided, it just kind of puts Nebraska almost, it's not Sisyphus, right? But mm-hmm. it's like the rock rolled quite a ways back down the hill. And and so now it's about kind of pushing it back up in terms of confidence and in terms of belief. And and uh you, you don't you don't get UCLA this week. You get Ohio State. And so uh tough task. Program's probably got it, you know, it's probably in its feelings a little bit. Thought Matt Rule uh, was, you know. I don't know what the right word is for how he was yesterday, but he wasn't like fire and brimstone. I don't think that this is the week for that. So um, it's, it's one of those weeks where uh, Nebraska is probably, you know, uh, check, checking, checking over some of the things that it believed about itself and trying to reinforce what it believes is true. I know you wrote about this. I know you asked the question yesterday and, and it's, I think where a lot of people went after that game and in trying to, figure out how the rest of the season is going to play out. And that's the confidence card here. And that's the thing that's been around this this program, especially with a lot of the upperclassmen, that there has been that that issue where you go and think it all all is going to be well and you're you're prepared and then all of a sudden something happens, you get punched in the mouth and as opposed to responding, there's there's kind of that freak out, whether that's just because Indiana was that good and Nebraska was mismatched or not. What did you see any of that? I know Matt Rule said he didn't see this coming, but have you seen glimpses of that part of it, the confidence part of it? And do you have confidence using that, that this is more of a learning moment for this season as opposed to a sign of things to come? Yeah, I, I don't know that I sensed before the game that Nebraska was uncertain of itself uh, going into it. Um, obviously, they lost the Illinois game, but no, I didn't. I didn't sense that there was there was a collapse coming. I think it was entirely possible Indiana won that game by seven, ten, uh, and we would have been picking apart things a little bit differently. You know, if it were uh, thirty five, twenty four, mm-hmm. um, we probably would have had thoughts and criticisms, but they wouldn't have been. You know, they wouldn't have been. Uh, we probably would have been looking at Ohio State as rock bottom potentially, yeah. and no, they've already hit it. So, you know, whatever Ohio State does or doesn't do in that game, I think they've already they've already hit the moment where they're not what they thought they could be. The confidence piece is interesting. I I think I think where Rule is trying to get the guys is just to compete day in and day out and not worry too much about the scoreboard. Uh stop looking at that and just stack good play after good yeah. play and and it didn't happen against against Indiana. So now you're going against the team that um, you know, can do that to you again. And so Nebraska is going to have to decide, you know, the players are going to have to decide how they want to compete and, and how they want to play. The scary thing about the game, and it's not that scary, but it's scary in a sense is that like, it didn't look like Nebraska was quitting. It looked like they, it just looked like they weren't nearly as good as Indiana and Indiana exploited all of those things. Mm-hmm. And that's an area where Nebraska has to get better pronto. Can this offense put together a drive that produces points, Sam, that does not include a 15 yard run or a 20 yard pass. It's very hard to do. I thought you were going to say that does not include a 15 yard jet sweep huh. or a, you know, I thought you were going to say a pass interference quarter, quarterback to quarterback throw, or I mean, they, they're having a hard time just running normal offense and staying in rhythm. You know, Ryla doesn't have very many rhythm throws. And by that, I just mean, you know, you drop back, you set your feet, you throw to a guy that's, you know, five yards away and he gets three more yards. That's just, that's yeah. not happening much. They're not getting a lot of rhythm throws. Um, I don't know that he's often in a rhythm. Just the way that the game is called and the plays are called, it feels like it's kind of a different style play almost every play. 
And so it, it, it feels like Nebraska's got a pretty big menu and it keeps trying to make dishes off the menu. And sometimes it makes it really well and some other dishes don't work. And, um, but you know, it's a 10 course meal and you got to, all 10 courses have to, you have to gel together in order to score. And Nebraska's, I think, having a hard time. They're just, you know, I think it's hard to score without a 15 yard run or a 20 yard pass in general. But Nebraska's having to manufacture fancy 15 yard runs, you know, two motions and this and that. They can't just run inside zone and, and pop one. They're, they're having to do a lot of different things uh, in order to get it done. And, and at some point, you know, uh, the wide receiver end arounds or the, the ace back hide runs, those, those run out. You just you put them on camera. So yeah. teams are ready for them. And I think that's where they're at right now. Sam, uh, Matt Rule says yesterday, and Gary and I even talked about this before we heard Matt Rule talk, uh, when we asked the question, what does this offense do well or where does it look like they're, use the word rhythm as much, mm-hmm. always seems like in tempo. Matt Rule says yesterday that ideally he'd like to see more tempo, gave some reasons why they don't, but ultimately if that's what he wants to do, being the head coach, why do we not see more of that? I think we might. I think, I think you know, Saturday was, they did a little bit of it. I think, I think we might see it. I think Satterfield likes to huddle. I think there's concerns about stealing signs, although I really don't know what, um, you know, what, if you have the microphone and you're just calling the play in the right. microphone and, and Dylan's, you know, calling it out to everybody, I'm not sure what the, what, what the sign stealing concerns would be. I don't know. There, the, there was, there were a bunch of nuggets that were dropped into that press conference that I think, I think it's just a coach who's trying to work through a game that he just didn't expect. And so like the lines about what well, we could have kicked the field goal when we could have done this. And, you know, I think that's all fine. But like, I think a lot of that is just a guy trying to process sort of with the media, um, his frustration, like he didn't want to kick a field goal in the third quarter. He doesn't know that they're going to make it because they haven't yeah. made it. And so like, but but I understand what he's thinking there. Like, God dang it, if I kick that field goal, then they have to put a backup quarterback out there. And does that guy go 80 yards? What if he didn't? And what if we hadn't thrown the ball and we hadn't all created all these turnovers? And everybody wouldn't be looking at us saying 56-7. They might be saying, you know, 42-17. And that's bad enough, but it's not 56-7. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen that before where games just get away from coaches and then they kind of shrug after afterward. and. And uh, I, I don't know that Rule uh, maybe appreciates that the cataclysmic losses are, are memorable to Nebraska fans, and so avoiding those is good. Like, people oddly don't remember that Ohio State beat Nebraska 52-17 in 2020. They're going to remember 56-7 because it's just a little bit larger a margin. And, you know, I, I, so I think he was sort of trying to process through everything as we're, we're yeah. sitting there. and. I don't know if he expected people to get snippy or rude. I'm not sure because that didn't happen. And, and he seemed, he seemed to be ready for those kind mm-hmm. of things. And we, then we didn't provide it. So then he, you know, he was just explaining himself. And I think he rambled a little bit. Mm. But isn't at the end of the day, all the stuff that happened on Saturday, the stuff that has happened in the previous six games, stuff that was said yesterday, doesn't Sam at the end of the day, this program, until they figure out the offensive side of the ball, and I think we're too far down the road to change anything with special teams in 2024, isn't the defense just everything? If the defense has a bad day at the office, Nebraska has a bad day at the office. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think they can re- rebound. Maybe maybe not this week, as much as everybody would hope. But I think that unit can play, like can play in a league game. Still, like they could... Um, you know, they could play an elite game against UCLA or they could play an elite game against Wisconsin. That's possible. And and I do think you can still go back to the well with that defense. Now it mm-hmm. seems like a couple guys are banged up and that's something to watch, but but yeah. I do think so. Yeah, I think absolutely that defense can have a much better day. Um obviously they had a hard day against against Indiana. Not not sure exactly why. We'll hear from the players today. Maybe they they can explain themselves. Um you know, only one of them talked on Saturday and, and, you know, Jamari Butler wasn't gonna, wasn't necessarily gonna say a ton. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll hear from more of those guys today and we'll find out what they have to say.
other than the score on Saturday, in your opinion, what is realistically there to see improvement against given how good Ohio State is? What are you looking for in response that would lead you to believe, okay, learn lessons, put up a good fight? I know the score could indicate a lot of that, but as far as the game within the game, what are you looking at? I'd say three things. One, the corners playing well, right? Winning 50-50 yeah. balls, knocking passes out. That didn't happen on, on Saturday. Obviously, Indiana won three of them, I think. And then Nebraska kind of played off coverage, and that was that didn't work. Uh, you know, they probably should have kept pressuring Indiana's receivers, and um, but they didn't. And then, you know, the screen passes came out. Uh, two is when you throw a ball, uh, you know, to the sideline, uh, somebody's blocking and somebody knows where the hell to run. Uh, okay. We'll just leave it no, at those two things. You are spot on like, that. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you know how to block? Can you block the guy in front of you? And do you know where you're supposed to run? Like don't run against the leverage of your blocker. Do also block like those two things. I'm sure they're going to spend a lot of time this week and you don't necessarily want to have to put, you know, the number six receiver on the field to do that, but maybe you have to in order to prove a point. Um, and then I think, you know, the the other part is just, you know, what is the identity of the run game? Are you able to play with a little bit of pace, a little bit of tempo, um, bust the player too? I think those are probably the things that I would say they can, they can improve on. I don't think that's going to beat Ohio State. But one thing I'll say about Ohio State is, they're probably just going to come out and say, we're just going to do whatever the hell we, we, we do. We're not going to come out here and try to be cute or, mm-hmm or try to do things that we don't need to do. We'll save that for Michigan and Penn State. So Nebraska's probably going to get Ohio State, you know, not gimmicky Ohio State, or we're going to come in here and and show all of our special defensive blitzes Ohio State. They're just going to get Ohio State base defense and what Ohio State wants to do on offense. And Nebraska may have more success, may have more success than we think in the first half. They could could get one off of Will Howard. Um, So we'll see what happens. Like it's, you know, we, I, I think Ohio State wins the game by three touchdowns and probably more, but the first half could look a lot better than the first half did against uh, mm-hmm. India. And I think that kind of looks like what Iowa did when they went into Columbus yeah. uh, a couple weeks ago. But that 5.93 yards per carry that Ohio State is right. uh, having doesn't make me real comfortable. I want to shift away right. from Nebraska. Um, you've watched enough ball. You now got to see him live and in person. How good is Indiana? Take out I what Nebraska, really take good. out what the, who they were yeah. playing, but how good is Indiana? I think they're really good. I think they do an incredible job of executing on offense. So we'll see what happens with the quarterback being banged up and whether he's able to return. I do think that that does affect their success, but I think they did a really nice job offensively of executing at really every single position. I thought they played with a lot of poise and precision. And defensively, you know, I think defensively they can get after the quarterback I think, you know, Nebraska's offense has got a lot of mess, and so it's hard to get an exact mm-hmm. understanding of how good Indiana's defense was. But that that offense is absolutely, positively, a 28-35 to 35 point a game offense against really anybody. You know, Michigan's rolling in there in a couple of weeks. I think they can score 35 on Michigan. It's, it's a good team, and, and I think uh, they have a very, very good chance of making the playoff if they can beat they play Washington, and I know they play Ohio State. They got to beat Michigan. I think that's going to be a, a huge, huge game. And then just remember, if they don't play Penn State, they don't play Oregon. I don't think. Mm-hmm. And so, if Penn State beats Ohio State in two weeks. You know, and Penn State wins this weekend. Penn State and Oregon are probably playing for the Big Ten championship. And so, it doesn't really make any difference um, what Indiana does against Ohio State because they're, you know. I guess it would if they beat Ohio State, then they then it would be a three way tie and it'd be a weird one, yeah. because none of the three teams played each other. But um, you know, if Indiana can lose a game and still make the playoff and not make the Big Ten championship, I I think there's a possibility of that if if you you, you play the dominoes out. So um, I'm not sure what's going to happen yet, um, but I do think that's a team that has an outside chance of making the big uh, the playoff. Shoot, if you put Indiana and Iowa State on a football field tomorrow, I'll take Indiana. If you put Indiana and Clemson on a football field tomorrow, ah, I'd probably take Indiana. Wow. Uh, so, you know, like it's, it's a good team. It's a good team. What, and real quickly on the, on the heels of that, as far as what you saw from Indiana, 
I I want to tie this back into the Nebraska game too, as far as big game atmosphere, not something that Indiana is used to having, but also we were talking about a lot of things we wanted to see from Nebraska, the preparation standpoint. You saw that obviously from Indiana look very, very prepared. At what point in this game did you think, okay, Indiana just looks like they've got all the answers and this thing this thing could eventually snowball the way it did? Right away. Yeah, yeah it didn't take long. As soon as Corey Barney caught the kickoff at the one and fell out of bounds, I think. I thought Nebraska should have taken the ball to start the game. I, I thought they should have taken the ball and tried to score and tried to gain control of that game and quiet the crowd. And, you know, Rule gave a very good answer as to why he didn't do that. He chose, you know, he does what he does. Um, I think, uh, but once they fall behind 7 nothing, and then the thing with the one-yard line, it's like, yeah, Nebraska's just not ready to go. Mm-hmm. Like, they're they're not. And I understand they could have tied the game 7-7 and all the rest, and I, I understand all of those things. But um, I thought once Indiana got the lead, Nebraska pressed it, and then they just pressed all day offensively and, and uh, so all kinds of stuff. So I, I think it's really important to get a lead, you know, uh, against Indiana. And they didn't do it. Uh, against Ohio State, I'm not sure it really matters that much, but but uh, getting a lead would be a good idea there too. Yeah, it would be. Sam, uh, thanks for your time. Safe travels back on the road out to uh, Columbus and uh, enjoy the rest of the week. All right, take care. That's uh, Sam McEwen in the Omaha World Herald.